is going to be fun, I think, I hope. But uh, just to add to the educational opportunity that we have here, this is a horse that they're going to bring in that has been in this pen for seven sessions. And those seven sessions have been conducted 99% of the contact is only with students that are novice people with wild horses. So there hasn't been any training of the horse. In fact, I would like to say, the horse is training the people. Um, so this horse was untouched before and so many people say, oh, I don't have time for all that namby-pamby stuff without violence, things like that. This is seven days with novice students and let's just see what they've done to allow this horse to teach them. Our horse is called Cinder and Cinder is in a lane out here where we can move the horses from place to place without uh, a halter on, without touching them in any way. So it's a setup for the handling of wild horses. And this is Cinder, and Cinder has come back in now to the pen after six days or whatever, this is the seventh day, of um, being gentled in the, in the chute as join-up has not been done with the horse. Uh, but people will often say to me, well, you couldn't do join-up with the wild horse and a month or so you might, after you can lead him around and stuff, you do join-up. I hear it all the time. So this horse, a am I absolutely correct that this horse has never had a join-up? Yeah. So I'm just going to let him move around in here. He knows the pen and he's been here before, so we're not worried about him hitting the fences or getting in trouble from that standpoint, but this is Cinder. And uh, lovely little horse. Probably needs a home, some adopter from someplace. Oh yeah. And the, we, we try to do this with a companion horse in the other chute, and the two chutes are almost essential really and sometimes if we only have one wild horse to work with we'll have a, uh, an older horse in the other chute just to give them their own world so to speak uh, a friend in their own species so to speak but I'm trying to get to be more in his species than in the human species so I'm gonna send him away Sending him away. And oftentimes I hear people say, oh, he just runs them until they're exhausted and then they'll do anything he wants. Well, that's certainly not true. And in this particular environment, I don't even want a canter. I'll just let him trot around here. And he'll go roughly three-eighths of a mile roughly three or four, maybe 500 yards. And then I'll really begin to listen to, watch for his communication system. When I turn him back to the right now, we'll begin to read his communication system. We've talked about it a lot. It's a body language. It is not vocal cords. It is not a language. It is body gestures that create a communication system. So I've sent him away. You know, basically what I'm saying is it's okay for you to go away. If you want to go away, go on, go away. Go away a lot. Because that's okay. But we make it so nice when he comes back that we cause the horse to want to come back. That's the object of join up. There's the ear, and actually I got a smaller circle out of it as he went around there. 
So the ear is the first one. Lowering the head is the third one, the smaller circle. And licking and chewing. I got that right there beautifully. Beautifully. All four gestures beautifully uttered by or demonstrated by Cinder. Smaller circle. Wonderful. Everything is okay now for me to begin the join up process. And what have I been? Two and a half, three minutes? That's all. When he gets over here now, I'm just going to step in front of him a little and go on a 45. And you see him square up there, sort of look at me and wonder, who are you and what is it that you want? And I'll turn and go 45 in the other direction. And I'll give him a little pull with my body. You, you'll watch him kind of lean forward like that. And I'll just give him a little pull with a little bit closer position like this. There, that's what I'm after. As soon as he gives me that turn toward me, then I'll turn the other way as a reward. He's beginning to see that he can move me to a place of comfort for him. You know, people say, oh, he ran away from me. That's why I gave him a crack with a whip. Yeah, because it was the horse's fault, they say. To blame a horse for anything is like blaming the night for being dark. It is their nature. They cannot lie. They can't make anything up. And the only thing they want in life is to survive and reproduce. And he's a gelding, so he's not going to reproduce. The only thing he wants is to be in a safe place and survive. And I'm just pulling him toward me these tiny little steps like that, like that like that. And then you see this right hand of mine, it's relaxed. The fingers are bent, they're not open like a claw would be. And I just move it toward his head slightly and slowly and just give him a rub. And we've made contact now. And I haven't hurt him. Oh well, horses don't have the feeling of pain that much. They're not that sensitive. Why is it then that he quivers to move a fly off of his back when it lands there? And why is he saying, it's okay for you to come in here and give me a rub? Because I've been right by him. I have not caused him any pain. And I'm moving him in both directions now. And being as wild as he is, this is his follow-up. The domestic horse would walk right to you. And he's doing a pretty good job of it there. So that's join up and follow-up. Now, I'm going to rub again. And I'm going to rub his neck here a little bit. Yeah. Then I'm going to change hands on the line slowly and rub him with the other hand. This hand might be a killer. And I'm going to rub him on the other side. And I'm going to step over to the off side and just let my hand go on his neck. Changing hands again and rubbing this side and the sweet spot right here on the wither. The sweet spot. Wonderful. A rub and walk away. And I'll, I'll start to move more like a human now. A little more speed in my movement, a little more direct. 
and I'm going to pick up this line and hold it while I give him a rub. He took a little extra look at that. But I'm going to drop it over his neck here. Now that's been done in the chute. So he's allowing me to do it. So I just have it here in my hand and I just ask him to come forward off of it and then give him a rub for coming forward. Oh, you can't teach a horse to lead that fast, can you? Yep, you can. So just a little tug and a rub. A little tug and a rub. Oh, wow, this is going so well. I'm going to go get a halter. Now, he's had a halter on that was put on in the chute. So he knows the movements to put a halter on. But it's very, very rudimentary or just the beginning of accepting a halter. Can you do it? Can you do it? Scratch the sweet spot. I'm just going to step away. I'd like him to... Everything, if I live by the concepts of join up, everything I do, I would like to have a little bit of inertia from him, the movement from him, to just sort of accept me. Not that one, that one, that one like that. Just accept me a little bit. That's living by the concepts of join up. I'm going in a little quicker now and scratching the sweet spot. Now I'm going to open this halter and I'm going to double it up and I'm going to scratch the sweet spot with the halter. Ooh, Mr. Roberts, that's kind of scary. Yeah, but it didn't hurt, did it? No, it felt good when you were there scratching. But I don't know, it looks a little bit dangerous coming in at me like that. Oh, that's okay, I'm not going to hurt you. How do I know that? You know it, because you read my book. I don't hurt horses. And, consequently, they don't hurt me. Here I am at 84, doing join up with a wild horse. Now the halter is wide open and it's a dually halter. Let's see if I can get it over that nose of his. Like that. And we'll get it buckled. I know, it looks too easy, doesn't it? I'm going to clip into the training ring on the dually halter and it's on him. Sure enough, just about the right size and everything. And I'll just coil this up and we'll begin to just walk around now and see what we've got in terms of yeah, training to lead. I'm going to bring his head toward me with the halter like that and give him a rub. I have never been in an enclosure with this horse before this particular session. I have not. And look what's happening here. The students have, and you might say they've done a very good job, but they are novice students in terms of wild horses, that's for sure. But here is my horse accepting the leading process in, what, 15 or 20 minutes. Such an unbelievable joy it is to watch these horses learn this way. Now, I don't think anybody has ever put the line around his middle. I, my students shook their heads over there to, to me, 
It's true, they have not put the line around his middle. But I have now, and I'm going to do it again and let it fall on the floor over there, on the ground. Yeah, oh, that's kind of scary, isn't it? Yeah, oh my goodness. And if it touches his hind leg, it's really going to be scary. Really going to be scary. Now watch as I just get him to take that hind foot back one step there. That a boy. Now watch this little move here. I'm going to pull that line back here where I can get it without putting my head down there under his belly, which has never been attempted before. So you don't send your own head to do that job. Now the line is around his middle. My goodness. And I'm going to roll a bowling into this like that. Yeah. And then now that the bowling is on there, it can't hurt him. So the worst thing that could happen is that I turn it loose and let him run around here dragging the line. But I have it on the halter and I have it around his middle and he's having a look at that around his middle. But the process of taking the girth is already happening. Look at this. And I can lead him by his girth now that fast. And then when he comes to me like that and says, I love you, I love you, he gets a good rub and here and here and here and here and here. And I can start to move with more uh, fluidity, m more movement. I'm going to see if I can get him to make a, a step now with the near forefoot. It might get the, the off forefoot, but Almost. Almost. We just play with this a little bit. <laughs> there. Now I have the line on and out between his front legs. Holy moly. He's got his first girth on. Can you believe it? Now I can just lead him around and he's feeling the sensation of having something around his middle for the first time in his life. But he's very willing and the good trainer can make a horse do almost anything he wants. The great trainer can get the horse to want to do it and this horse is wanting to do it. Why? because it gets him value. It gets him good things. Look at this. It gets him love and consideration. Not pain, not force. Okay, I'm gonna take it off now because I've pushed the envelope about as far as you'd ever want to on this seventh day. But what I do want to do now is let things fly around a little bit because things happen where something gets flying around like that and then it drags and touches the hind legs in a funny place and a horse can get hurt if he bolts away from something like that. But watch me just pull this off now and we'll let it fall on the floor. Boom. Like that. And he says, that wasn't so bad. Oh, don't do it from this side. Well, I'll give it a try because it didn't hurt me on the other side. So I'll give it a try. I had no idea I was going to be able to get this far with this horse, but I might as well just show you 
the value of nonviolent training. It is incredible what horses will do for you if you get it right for them. Good boy. Now, let's just see something here. Let's just see something here. Yeah, you're such a good boy. I'm going to get quiet now with all this line. I'm going to coil it up quite tight and get quiet with it. And then I'm just going to walk and see what his choice is. Where does he want to be? No line on him. Where does he want to be? It is so much fun. A few minutes ago, I couldn't get him to follow me. Oh, a step or two, and, and I enjoyed rewarding him for a tiny little step toward me, just in a turn. Wasn't really a follow-up, was it? But I, I reward him for that. What's the reward? Just this. Look at him step again. Just this. That's the reward. When I walked away, he didn't follow me. Now he says, you have convinced me, Mr. Roberts. You're right about these things, and I'm going to join your club. Be your friend. I love it. Mm -hmm.